which reverse proxy should you choose for your application. In this video, I'm going to put YARP and NGINX to the test in a performance benchmark, and we're also going to compare them in terms of ease of use and some other features that they have to offer. So let's dive in. A quick intro before we can compare YARP to NGINX is understanding how they are different. And to do this, I need to introduce you to the OSI model. The OSI model or the Open Systems Interconnection model is a conceptual model that explains how systems can exchange data. It has seven layers, the physical data link, network, transport, session, presentation, and application layers. Now, typically reverse proxies work at either layer four or layer seven. And GenX is a layer four proxy, which means it works at the transport layer. At this layer, we are still at the protocol level, typically TCP. And this has a significant impact on what NGINX can do when it comes to proxy. YARP is a layer 7 proxy, which means it works at the application layer. And here you have full information that's required to process an incoming request, which means we can work with cookies or JSON web tokens and use them as part of our proxying rules. So this is the high level distinction between YARP and NGINX and layer 4 and layer 7 proxies. Now let's see how we're going to integrate them into our system and then run a performance benchmark. So what I'm going to do is run a Hello World API with just one API endpoint, and then I'm going to place YARP or NGINX as a proxy in front of this API, and then I'm going to run a performance benchmark using K6. So let's start by introducing YARP into our solution. YARP is available either as a NuGet package or a library, or as a Docker container, which is currently in preview. And for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to be running YARP as a library. So I will need another web API inside of my solution to be able to run YARP. I'm going to call the new project YARP proxy. I won't be using HTTPS because that's going to slow down our benchmarks. I really want to test out the raw performance of my proxies. So I will just be using HTTP. Now I will run both YARP and NGINX inside of a Linux container. The first reason to do this is ease of use and being able to run everything using Docker Compose. And the second reason is standardization, because if I run both of the proxies inside of a container, the benchmark is going to be more similar. So let's go into our YARP proxy setup. And I'm going to first simplify the scaffolded template that we have here by getting rid of everything that I don't need. The next thing I'm going to do is install YARP. So let's go ahead and look for YARP. And I'm going to install the YARP reverse proxy library. Let's go ahead and add the latest version. And going back to my setup, we have to do two things. The first one is add YARP to the service container. So I will say builder services add reverse proxy. And then I'm going to chain a call to load from config. And I'm going to provide the configuration section where I can find my proxy settings and the config section is going to be called reverse proxy. So this loads the required services and applies the YARP configuration. And then I need to expose my reverse proxy by calling app map reverse proxy. So that's everything we need to do on the application side. Now, what about the configuration values? Before we head into that, let's make sure that YARP is part of my Docker Compose setup. So I'm going to say add container orchestrator support and then choose Docker Compose. This is going to update my Docker Compose YAML file to introduce my YARP proxy as a service. And I'm going to also expose the ports where I want to access YARP. I'm going to make it available on the port 3000 on my local machine and internally I'm exposing the port 8080. And I'm also going to say that YARP depends on the Hello API service. Now, because both of our containers are going to be running inside of a Docker network, this is the URI that I can use to reference the API that we're going to be proxying to. So if I go into the YARP proxy application settings and introduce the reverse proxy section, we have to configure two properties, the routes and the clusters. Let's give our cluster a name. I'm going to call it backend. And then we can configure the destinations and I'm going to give it the name of destination one. And the property that I want to set here is the address of my API. Now remember that I'm using the local address that's available in the Docker network, which is Hello API, and the port where my API is listening on is 8080. After this, I can configure my routes. And the first thing I need to do is add the cluster ID, which is going to match the particular route to the cluster that I have defined. When it comes to matching the route, I'm going to match them based on the path. And I'm just going to use a catch-all wildcard to proxy any request that I get on YARP 
to my backend. And this is all the setup that's required to run YAR as a reverse proxy, where I'm also configuring where the backend API is. Now, how do we run Nginx inside of our Docker Compose setup? Well, I'm going to add Nginx as another container. I'll call this service the Nginx proxy. I'm going to use the Nginx Alpine image and I'm going to expose Nginx on port 3001. Now, the important thing here is mapping the Nginx configuration into the internal file system of the container. I'll show you what the configuration is going to look like in just a moment. And just the same, we're going to depend on the Hello API. So now I have my setup using Docker Compose and I can run both of my proxies and test out my solution. But what about the Nginx configuration? Well, we have to create a file. I'm going to call it nginxproxy.conf and let me show you what this file looks like. Here's the nginx proxy configuration file and we have two sections here, events and HTTP. The important one is the HTTP section where I'm configuring the upstream server where we are going to be proxying our requests. The server is going to point to hello API 8080, which means I can reference the address of my service inside of my Docker network, and Docker will take care of resolving the appropriate IP address. Now, when it comes to the server configuration, this is where we set up Nginx, and I'm exposing Nginx to listen on port 80, which is why I'm mapping 80 as an internal port to 3001 as the public port on my local machine. And when it comes to setting up the proxy, we just have to say location, backslash, and then proxy pass, and just proxy every request that you get to our upstream backend we configured in the previous section. So now I should be able to start everything up using Docker Compose and test out my reverse proxy. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to open up the command prompt, and I'm going to say Docker Compose build, and this is going to build the locally configured Docker Compose YAML file. It's going to fetch any services that we are missing or build any Docker files into images that we can run inside of our containers. After my build completes, I'm going to say docker compose up, and I'm also going to run this in detached mode, and this is going to spin up my services. So you can see I have three containers, our backend API and the YARP and Nginx proxies. If I open up Docker desktop, you can see that our three containers are now running. And if I open up the browser and head over to localhost 3000 slash hello, you can see that I'm getting back to response as hello world. If I refresh this a couple of times, you can see it's still working. And if I open up the container logs for the YARP proxy, you can see that we are proxying to our backend API in this log statement here. If I switch the port to 3001 slash hello, this is going to work just the same, except we're going to use Nginx as the proxy. So now that we know that both of them are proxying as expected, how do we actually run a performance benchmark? I wrote two scripts using K6 that I'm going to use for my load testing benchmark. And what we're going to do inside is configure a fixed number of virtual users that are going to be sending requests to our proxy. And each user is going to send a thousand requests. And the test is really simple. We're just going to send a request to one of the proxies and then slash hello. In this case, this is the address for the ER proxy. And we're going to confirm that we're getting back a 200 OK status code. I'm doing the same thing in the Nginx test, except I switched the port where we are sending the request. So this is what our benchmarks look like. Our services are running behind the scenes, and now all that's left is to actually run the benchmarks and discuss the performance results. So let's go back to the console, and I'm going to say k6 run, and let's first run the YARP benchmark. I'm going to say benchmark YARP JS, hit enter, and this is going to start running my benchmark. So you can see that we are sending the requests to our reverse proxy, and in a moment we're going to get back the results. And the results are in, and YARP is giving us around 21,000 requests per second. The average request time is 9.5 milliseconds, and then we can see the P90 and P95 metrics here. P90, which means 90% of all requests complete in this time, is 13.7 milliseconds, and P95 is around 15 milliseconds. So definitely not bad for YARP, 21,000 requests per second is a considerable load. Now mind you that I'm running this benchmark while also running recording software and a couple of other things on my machine, so I'm using up some of my available resources, and this is going to affect my benchmark results. Now let's actually run the same thing with Nginx. I'm going to say k6 run benchmark Nginx, and we're going to observe the performance results. 
And you can already see from the start that it seems like Nginx is a bit slower than YAR. Now we're going to wait for the benchmark to complete before we actually determine that this is true, but I can already safely assume that this is going to be the case. And we're getting back around 9,500 requests per second using Nginx as the proxy, and the average response time is more than doubled at around 21 milliseconds, P90 is 23 milliseconds, and P95 is 24 milliseconds. So very stable when it comes to P90 and P95, but nonetheless significantly slower than YARP. So if I were to just leave it at this, we could conclude that YARP is the superior choice and we should be using it as a reverse proxy in all of our systems. But that's actually not the case. So let's take a step back and return to our Nginx configuration that I added a few minutes ago. The Nginx config that I was using is the default one, and it has some lower than sane defaults when it comes to number of worker processes, how many connections Nginx is able to accept, and this is going to limit our performance as you saw in the benchmark. So if I were to replace all of this with a more performance tuned configuration, which would look something like this, we should see an improved performance. The key configuration values that I'm going to highlight is setting worker processes to auto and then increasing the available worker connections, a couple of keep alive values and a few other configuration values while keeping our downstream setup the same, we should see some improved performance. Now, how much is this actually going to help? Well, let's rerun our benchmarks. I'm going to start by running the YARP benchmark again. So let's go ahead and run this and see what the response is going to be. And you can see that we are getting around 33,000 requests per second from YARP in this benchmark. Here's the request per second number here. I can also run this benchmark a few more times and pick a best of three response, but it should be sufficient. So keep that in mind, 33,500 requests per second. And now I'm going to run the Nginx benchmark again and you can already see that it seems to be much faster than it was the case previously. And this time around, we are getting 37,000 requests per second, which is already more than 10% faster. And note that here we are just comparing raw performance in terms of requests per second. We didn't even take into consideration the resource consumption than CPU usage of YARP and Nginx. It's not something that I'm going to be doing as part of this benchmark. But you can see that Nginx is definitely faster than YARP when tuned correctly. However, there's more to this story than just performance. Both of these proxies are very easy to run and configure, but one thing I want you to consider when it comes to if you want to use YARP or not is how easy it is to integrate YARP with the other features that we have in the .NET ecosystem. That's authentication and authorization, rate limiting, load balancing, middleware. You can write your own custom middleware, add it to the YARP proxy, and it's going to work out of the box. You can also configure open telemetry as part of your observability setup and get full distributed traces when sending requests to your system. So even though it's slightly slower than Nginx, being able to take advantage of all the things that we have in the .NET ecosystem is a big plus in favor of YARP. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to learn more about YARP, then I suggest you watch this video next. Check out my courses if you want to improve your software architecture skills. And until next time, stay awesome.